Hi kids, happy Easter. I'm Miss Melissa and I'm so glad you're here with me today. We're going to make something together in a little bit. So if you want to do it with me, go grab some glue and a piece of paper. I have black, but you can use any color or even white and some salt. And if you want to be extra fancy, you might want to get some paint like this. Okay. I'll see you back here in a minute. What are some things you've done to celebrate Easter so far? Maybe you dyed Easter eggs or read the Easter story with your family. Maybe you went on an Easter egg hunt. Easter egg hunts are a lot of fun. Getting to search for eggs filled with treats is so exciting, right? And once you find the eggs, it's so exciting to get to open each egg and see what surprise is in there. You just never know what you're going to find in an Easter egg. Maybe a toy or chocolate. Maybe a coin or a jelly beans. What do you think is inside this egg? Coins? Jelly beans? As awesome as Easter eggs are, there's an even better Easter surprise. In fact, the best Easter surprise of all time is something that happened over 2,000 years ago. You see, Jesus is God, but he chose to become a man and live on this earth and then die in our place. He died to pay the price for our sins so that we could be friends with God again and to make a way for us to go to heaven someday. After he died, his friends buried him in the tomb and a big stone was rolled in front of the doorway to block the tomb and soldiers were even standing outside the tomb guarding it. On the first day, let's imagine this is the tomb. On the first day, Jesus was inside the tomb. On the second day, Jesus was still in the tomb. But on the third day, an angel appeared and rolled the stone away from the doorway so Jesus' friends could look inside the tomb. And they found it was totally empty. Jesus was alive. On Easter, we celebrate that Jesus rose from the dead. Now, when you see an empty Easter egg like this, I want you to remember that the tomb where Jesus had been buried was empty too. Jesus didn't stay in the tomb because he had risen from the dead. Jesus is alive.
Just imagine we're all climbing a mountain. On the way up, you probably don't see much, maybe some trees and some grass and a stream. But once you reach the very top of the mountain, the view is amazing. It might have been hard to imagine what that view would look like on the way up. Today we're talking about something else that's a little hard to imagine, but it's true and amazing. You can find this story in each of the first four books of the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all tell us about this amazing time. This morning, we're going to look at Mark 16, verses 1 through 8. It says, Saturday evening, when the Sabbath had ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. Now, it says that on Sunday morning, three women went to the place where Jesus had been buried. I wonder what spices they brought. Do you think they brought things like salt and pepper? Or maybe some cumin? Or onion powder? <laughs> no. I don't think so. These tasty spices that we put on our food is not what we're talking about in this story. The spices that they brought were most likely a mixture of myrrh and aloes that they used to clean and preserve the body. They probably smelled really good. Now the Bible tells us that when those three women arrived at the tomb, that really heavy stone that had been rolled in front was gone. The stone had been rolled away and someone dressed in a white robe was sitting inside. That was definitely not what they were expecting. That man was an angel, and he told the women that Jesus was not there, that Jesus had risen from the dead. The women were scared and shocked, but they ran and told Jesus' disciples that Jesus was alive. We do a lot of fun stuff at Easter, like egg hunts, where we get baskets with candy and we play fun games. But we have to remember that Easter is about so much more. Easter is about remembering what Jesus did for us. Jesus died on the cross and rose again from the dead so you and I can have a relationship with God. God's Story, Easter. So part of God's story is about Easter and it begins like this. You might know Easter as the Sunday a ginormous bunny hides chocolate inside plastic eggs. But Easter is really all about how much Jesus loves us and how God sent him to rescue us. Remember how the Jews, God's special family, were waiting for a king to come rescue them? Well, Jesus was the king, and this rescue was the whole reason he came to earth. God had already rescued the Jews once before, but this time it was going to include everyone. So one night, Jesus told his friends about the rescue. Exciting, right? But talking about this rescue was sad. That's because Jesus was going to rescue the world by dying. Kids, every mean or bad thing we do deserves punishment. By dying, Jesus took our punishment. Lots of things in life have good parts and bad parts. And just like candy bars are mostly good, as long as you brush your teeth after you eat one, this story is a really good one. Anyway, talking about the rescue made Jesus sad since he didn't really want to die. Thankfully, we can talk to God when we're sad, so Jesus took a few friends into a garden to pray. In the garden, a guy named Judas, who people thought was Jesus' friend, came with some people to help arrest Jesus. Peter, one of Jesus' true friends, was so mad he cut off a servant's ear with his sword. But Jesus didn't want his friends to hurt others, so Jesus healed the ear and let them arrest him. Then Jesus was taken to trial. One of the most powerful men in the city, Pontius Pilate, wanted to let Jesus go. But many of the people wanted Jesus to die. They didn't believe he was the Son of God or any kind of king. Even after all the miracles Jesus did, like healing sick people and making blind people see, they didn't believe in him. The people were so mad, they started yelling, kill him! So Pontius Pilate let the soldiers take Jesus. The soldiers made fun of the idea that Jesus was a king. They put a crown of thorns on his head and nailed him to a cross. Many people watched, but not all of them wanted Jesus to die. His mother and close friends were there too. Just imagine how they must have felt. 
Once Jesus was up on the cross, the sun stopped shining for three whole hours in the middle of the day. But those soldiers kept right on making fun of him. They said, if you're really God's son, why don't you just call on some angels to save you? Jesus could have called on angels to save him, but he loved us so much that he wanted to rescue us. So instead, he prayed to God, Father, I place my life into your hands. At that moment, Jesus died. And when he died, the soldiers who had just killed him realized he really was the Son of God. Later, Jesus was put into a tomb and a big rock blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends thought that was the end. But three days later, God sent an angel to roll the stone away. Don't worry, Jesus could get out on his own. The angel moved the rock so everybody else could see the tomb was empty. Jesus' friends were the first to stop by the tomb. The angel said, He has risen! Which is another way of saying, Jesus is alive! Nobody could believe it! Jesus took our punishment and then proved He really is the Son of God by coming back to life. Now, if we choose to follow Jesus, God forgives us for all the wrong things we do because Jesus already took our punishment. And that's the story of Easter. But that's not all there is. Here's a quick version of what happened after the angel told the good news. Jesus' friends got scared. Jesus appeared to them. They saw his scars. It was really him. Now they could share the good news too. Jesus appeared to more than 500 people. He went back up to heaven. And the best part? He promised to come back someday for everybody who follows him. And all that is a part of God's story. Let's create a reminder of what Jesus did for us. Okay, so we're going to make a cross today to remember and remind ourselves what Jesus did for us. Okay, now we're going to use glue to draw a cross. Now you can draw a cross however you want. And if you want to, you can draw a cross first here like this. You can use a crayon or a pencil. So see, I can start to draw a cross. Or if you want to, you can just draw with the glue. So up to you on how, see how I'm drawing a line with the glue. And if I've drawn, if you've gone ahead and drawn with a pencil or a pen, then you just go ahead and draw over it with the glue. See that? So there, I have a cross. And if you want to add anything to it, you can. you can. You can add some design to it, but you don't want to color it all the way in. Don't use so much glue that it pools all through it. Otherwise, it'll be really messy. Okay? So if you want to do a design, see, I can do a design any way I want. I can draw with my glue. Okay? If I want to just do dots. All right, now you're gonna take your salt, take your salt shaker and just salt your glue. Salt your glue everywhere. You want lots of salt on your paper. You gotta do it while your glue is still wet because this salt is gonna stick to your glue. Okay, so salt, 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 salt all over your paper gonna look kind of like that, okay? And once you have salt all over your paper, don't touch it. You're gonna grab your paper and your mom is probably gonna want you to dump this in the sink or in the tra trash can. Don't just dump it on the table, okay? Cause that's gonna make a really big mess. So I'm gonna dump it. I'm gonna dump it in a bowl. So I'm gonna fold the paper and dump the extra salt in a bowl. But now on my paper, I have 
I have a cross. And if I want to be extra fancy, I'm going to take my paint and get it really wet. So use your water. Use your water and get your paint real wet, okay? Dip it in the water a lot of times so that your paint is really wet. And then you're going to take some of this paint and just touch it to the salt. Now, you see how it kind of, I just have to touch it and it will start to, it will start to color all the salt. You aren't really painting the salt, you're just touching the salt, okay? I'm going to get a different color really wet. Now I'm going to touch a different spot. Okay, let's do some red. I guess this is orange. And we're just going to touch it. You just need it to be really wet so that it works. You see how it's putting color on it? Almost like dying an Easter egg. You don't need it to paint it. We're just touching it. I'm just touching it. You see how I'm just touching it? And you can just keep doing that until you have the design you want. You can use all one color or different colors, whatever you want. And then when you're done, you can hang this someplace to remind you of what Jesus did and what Easter is really all about. And then you're going to want to let it dry. Once you have the color the way you want it, you're just going to want to let it sit and dry. Okay? And there you are. There you have your very own cross. We're learning a new memory verse this month. It's Romans 10, 9. And it goes like this. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. How about you copy me as we start to learn this verse, okay? Romans 10, 9. Romans 10, 9. If you openly declare, now your turn, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved you will be saved. <laughs> Good job. Shall we do it one more time together? Everybody together this time? Romans 10, 9. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Good job, everyone. Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And I'm... And welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl, where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. Hello and welcome there, kiddos. Welcome to Grow TV. Hope you all are doing well. I just want to start off by introducing someone special, <laughs> Mr. Knuckles. So say hello, Mr. Knuckles. Hello, everybody. I would say it's good to see you, but I don't have real eyes. <laughs> You're so funny, Mr. Knuckles. <coughs> What's up? You all right, Vanessa? Oh, sorry, that's my bad. Uh, let's say hello to my real friend, Vanessa. Hello! Say hello! Say hello! Don't be rude, yes. Say hello. I don't think they can hear you. Oh, really? Well, okay. Say hello to Vanessa! No, because they're watching on a screen. Oh, got it, sorry. No worries, thanks for having me, Carl. I'm super happy to be here. And we're happy to have you. What's that? I haven't heard that sound in ages. That means we got some super secret mail. 
Super secret mail, what does that mean? It means exactly that. The piece of mail is super secret. So close your eyes. Wait, what? Super secret mail only shows up when you close your eyes super tight. Okay. Wow! <laughs> super secret mail. Wow. Told you. Now let's see what's in here. I have no idea what's in here. Whoa! This is earth shattering. What did it say? I can't believe this. Why? Who? How? What? Ha! Ah! Are you gonna tell me? I can't. It's super secret. And even if I were to tell you, I can't. Because it's super secret. And the message would freak you out. Just let me look. What? I told you. I'm kidding. I already knew this. Did you not know? Of course not. And I doubt you did either. Of course I did. It's in the Bible, Carl. Excuse me? I mean, come on. It's the big thing in the Bible. Open up your Bible, Carl, to the book of Mark, chapter 16. It's talking about how the two Marys in Siloam went and bought spices to visit the place where Jesus was buried. Now, what kind of spices do you think they bought? Cayenne pepper? Smoked paprika? Or maybe something like Tony's Cajun? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can safely say it wasn't any of those. It was a spice people used to honor the people they loved in those times. Oh, that makes more sense. It says that they went to the tomb and the big rock in front of the tomb was rolled away? Wait a second. Wasn't it supposed to be covered? Yes, sir. But that day was a whole lot more different than any other. You see, there was a man sitting there in a white robe where Jesus' body should have been laying. What? Jesus wasn't there? Somebody moved the body? Keep reading. It says the ladies were alarmed, but the man said they shouldn't be. He said Jesus was risen? Keep reading. Okay, then the man told them that they needed to tell the disciples that Jesus has risen up and that he is head of the galley, just like Jesus had said before. What in the world? Told you so. How in the world did I never know this? My whole life I've lived not knowing that Jesus rose from the dead? No way, Carl. You've known about this for a while. What are you talking about? I can never forget such an important thing. You always said that you're a pretty forgetful guy. Don't you remember always saying that? I don't, you, oh, yeah, you're right, okay. It's just that I've loved Jesus my whole life because I know how good he is and how much he loves me. But I forgot how much. I mean, he died. Yes. And then he rose again. Yes, again. It's so unbelievable that I forgot. What do you mean? Well, we forget amazing things all the time. The fact that we can make noises with our mouth and people can understand. The fact that we're living on a giant rock that's floating through a huge amount of space. And that the Son of God died for us and rose three days later. All because he loves us. How awesome is that? It's very awesome. It's very easy to take all these wonderful truths for granted because they've always been there. I'm so glad we had this super secret mail to remind us today. Because really, this message shouldn't be super secret. We should tell everybody. I agree. I love what that piece of mail said. Wait, I forgot what it said. What did it say? <laughs> it says Jesus overcame death. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's awesome. Not only is that great news, but that's our big idea. <laughs> Today's big idea is Jesus overcame death. So let's say it out loud to the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus overcame, overcame death. death. Right. Right. Well, I learned a lot today. I'm glad. Oh, look. I found another envelope. Oh, really? What does it say? It says there's something on Carl's sweater. Yeah? I don't see. Oh. <laughs> gotcha. See you next week, kids. Yeah, whatever. Vanessa. <laughs> Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Let's pray together before we go. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for dying on the cross to pay for our sins and for raising from the dead. We trust you. We believe you are the Lord of all and we worship you today. We love you. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks for being with me today, kids. Happy Easter. Bye.